All right, now that we're done with the AHR Expo, we're doing the Builder Show, which is the International Builder Show. It's, it is kind of international. I think it's mostly an American thing. Just FYI, it is not really a home show. This is for builders. And what I'm gonna talk about in this video is the things that I've seen that are very like exciting and some things that I'm a little bit concerned about. Just like I did in the last video, I'm gonna be clocking the carbon dioxide inside the show floor. Right now, we're at almost 2,000 parts per million carbon dioxide. Outdoors is 400. 1,000 is where you start saying, mm, this is probably not healthy for you. So everybody in here is an idiot right now, by definition. Also, if you look around, this crowd is a little different. They don't like to wear their masks even though it's a rule, supposedly, that we're all wearing them together to protect each other. People like me who have little kids at home, I don't want to take COVID back to them. Even if it's only going to be a cold for me, I've got unvaxxed kids. So it's just interesting. That is a major problem. Bro Newtone, again, where a lot of interesting stuff on the ventilation side is happening. I have two really exciting things that I'd like to show you. First of all, this is Travis Rash. He's going to show us a damper that they've got, which it looks like a little bit like a damper that you might have seen before, but there's some new stuff on it. So show, show us this. It doesn't, it looks unassuming. So Corbett, what we have is our new Fin 6MD smart motorized damper. And really the objective of this product was smart, simple, and easy to install. And so we talk about the smart piece. This particular product has an integrated humidity and temperature sensor. What that means to the contractor, the homeowner, is we are measuring the outdoor humidity and temperature coming into the home, deciding through an algorithm, is it the best time to bring that air into the home? If so, it will do it. If not, based on that algorithm, we determine when the best time of that uh, day to bring that air in. I love this because it looks like they just repositioned normally. There was, there was used to be like a wart on top of this, like a big thing. And this isn't just that, it's also a brain. There's a computer in here and you set the little setting. So now you don't have to have the motorized damper, wire it up to a controller that sits somewhere else in the house. This is actually monitoring the air as it comes in. I wanna show you a kitchen thing. Can we go over, go over to your kitchen hood area? Okay, so we all know that if you, you can design a house that's as beautiful and perfect and high performance as you want, but as soon as people move in, we have a problem. So we got kitchen exhaust hood, right? That's over your cooktop. It goes outside, so, so important, but if people don't use it every time they cook, then what good does it do? So here's the thing that they've actually come up with. Can I switch spaces in yep, here? Absolutely. Okay, so Travis is gonna show us, if you were to start cooking with a typical heat sensing exhaust hood right now, those exhaust uh, hoods only sense heat when it's dangerous, when like you're gonna melt the exhaust hood, then it'll kick on. It's only for protection of the equipment. It's not gonna kick on automatically, right? So this one has, Infrared sensor, uh, so it does monitor that cooking surface. And so, so this right here, is yep. that the infrared sensor? Correct, yep. So just like an infrared camera has, you know, 49,000 infrared thermometers inside of it, little beams, this one has one of those infrared thermometers and it's looking at the cooking surface. Yeah, so this is a quiet one, so you can't hear it, but it's, it, now it reacts based on the amount of heat, right? right? So if you, if you have one burner going, I don't know how many BTUs this in, but this is not more than 10,000 BTUs, right? You've got burners on your stove that are like 20,000, even 30,000 BTUs. And so if you click on what the, the big boys on high, this will notice that and it'll say, ooh, that's on, that's like a lot of heat. So I'm gonna ramp up versus a little bit of heat just making a cup of tea. This is the kind of stuff that's gonna change the real conversation about ventilation. You may not know, but our third season of home diagnosis is all about disasters it's called accidents happen. And so here we are with FEMA's building science division. And so uh, we've got John, we got Juan, we got Alicia, and we got Christina. Um, what are you guys excited about? That's like maybe a good thing. Well, I'm sure there's lots of things that are not great that we're gonna talk about soon, but, but good, let's just stick with the hopeful stuff. Sure, I mean, it's been a great show. And what I'm really excited about is how many people have stopped by our booth, uh, interested in our new publication on creating a safe room in your home. Interesting. Um, a lot of home builders and uh, homeowners alike have come up and expressed interest in being safe during tornadoes and uh, how to do that. And so we have great guidance on how to build a safe room in your home. And I think it's great that people are interested. Nice. All right. Good. Next one. I'm excited about people interested in building better to break the cycle. When the disaster storm, the storm comes in, let's build it better so it doesn't get damaged again. And they're literally asking you for that. Uh, I'm telling them about it. <laughs> all right, good, yeah, all right. I'm excited that people are finally uh, gaining awareness that there's a national standard, not just your community standard. The community standard is the baseline. 
should be building at or above code. And that's important that people are listening to us. Nice. Awesome. And Christina? Um, my favorite part of this um, publication is the centerfold. The centerfold <laughs> is this cool, and it actually the, is the plans for a safe room. And I'm really, really proud of this oh, document nice. from FEMA and his actual construction plans. So that's what I'm excited about. Great. Awesome. Okay. Well, we'll have more coming from FEMA because I hope that they're going to be an important partner on season three. So uh, we will ha you will see more from all of this team and we will do more disaster preparedness. One of the huge topics that we're kicking off with on season three of Home Diagnosis is fire safety. And this is Bill. Bill knows a lot about fire safety because he's developed a couple of interesting products uh, around fire safety. So one that I learned about a couple years ago and I actually have hoped would, would work out for our season three is this. Bill, will you please describe what it is that we're looking at here? This is the Vulcan vent. It's one of the first self-closing vents for fire safety. California cited that a lot of the fires were get started in your attic and with the light fuels are up there. So they needed a vent that would stop flame and ember intrusion. So this vent covers both. You can see when it hits, fire hits it, it closes off. These cells fill up with an intumescent coating and it closes it off for fire. You can't see my hand behind it. Where here on this side, you can completely see my hand. So you have great airflow to keep your attic ventilated. So apparently that's how a lot of these fires are starting is it's not a flaming tree falls on your house and then burns it out. It's that these little tiny embers will find their way around just like we're worried about particles and chemicals and molecules in indoor air quality. That's the, it's the same deal in fire. It's like the small stuff makes a big difference. One of the best parts about coming to the Builder Show is that you get to meet with celebrities. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so <laughs> this is Ross Chatui. You may know him from this old house. He is also a professional engineer in Massachusetts and works on buildings all the time, multifamily, single family, and commercial. Thank yes. you very much for talking with us yeah, today. Yeah, glad to be here. So what, what are you seeing uh, in the kind of like cutting edge of what is going on to make homes healthier and et cetera, et cetera? Well, there's a big push at the IBS show here um, on smarter controls. So getting into manned control ventilation, right? So making sure that our ventilators, our ERVs, and our um, fans of the building are actually running when they should be running. And so- Without those, people getting in the way that's and right. having to press a button. That's right. Take the manual controls off, you know, out of the out of the house and let it run automatically behind the seat. So we're just around the seat. We're seeing a trend for autonomous buildings. Right. I mean, if you think about it, like back in the, 1700s people had to start a fire in the room that they were about to use in an hour so that it would warm up and then they would put out the fire in the room they were leaving right and like in the 1960s you'd have a room air conditioner in your bedroom and a room air conditioner in your room and like we're, it's more in every system in the house uh including the enclosure which i'm sure you know like opening and closing windows used to be a thing and now like I, i've got windows in my house that work I never. They stay closed. Yeah. yeah. They stay closed. I, I kind of wish that I shouldn't, you know, I hadn't actually like, but you know, happy wife, happy life too. Sorry, Grace. <laughs> no, you got to let the house, you know, ventilate, especially if you're building really here. You got it. You got to ventilate. And uh, it defeats the purpose if you just open all the windows, right? Because now you're bringing in all of the pollen and dust or anything that's outside is coming in. Even if it's good from a CO2 perspective, it's still uh, great if you can run your, you know, your HVC system to do what it does best. Absolutely. Keep it nice and dry. You know, keep it nice, hot, cold, whatever temperature you set that. Keep it filtered. Um, you know, that's what uh, that's what we pay for. Yes. Yeah. One danger of these kind of shows, they're trying to show off all kinds of stuff, including fire. Doing as much combustion testing as I have done in my career. You can learn to smell combustion byproducts. It's a very specific smell, and those of you who test water heaters and furnaces know what I'm talking about. Guess where these are venting? No wonder it's so sticky. I was describing this as kind of like walking around inside somebody's mouth earlier. It's very moist if you if that word hits a chord with you. Outside again, we're at the Mitsubishi booth with Chad Gillespie, who is the high performance expert at Mitsubishi. I want to kind of talk for a minute about people get uh, upset about the ductless mini split thing because they either say, I don't want to have one of those on my wall or um, the, the wall mount is the only option. The wall mount is not the only option, right? You guys are doing more of the small ducted. Yes, even though we use a lot of the ductless product, um, when you 
really are, are moving into what we see today with higher efficiency and higher filtration products, we're starting to see a lot more use of the mini ducted as well as our full size ducted system to incorporate um, you know, ERVs or higher MER filtration. Uh, and that's really becoming a big part of the health of the house. And so yes, duct is becoming more part of that. Right, so, so don't forget, you gotta have some kind of a duct system for ventilation, outside air, Absolutely. you gotta have filtration, both of those are kind of, it's difficult to do that with the, the wall mounted ductless mini splits and you can use the inverter technology that they've got where it ramps from very low up to full speed, which is important because the HVAC companies, even the really, really good ones that you and I know their names, will add a ton to a manual J calculation for a high performance home because they don't trust that the builder's gonna do a good job with the enclosure. Builders, that's a note for you um, because they keep seeing it again and again. They don't actually do the air sealing and the insulation that they said that they were gonna do and then the air conditioning doesn't work. And so. so anyway, instead of installing a two stage air conditioner where it's, it's probably gonna run mostly at the lower stage, just do an inverter. That way you've got full control, infinite variability between the two and that's where these the ductless mini split inverter technology can help you while also giving you the opportunity to do the ducted system where you've got filtration and all the other things. Absolutely. A while back, I made a slightly inflammatory video for people who are whole house fan enthusiasts. I stand by everything that I pointed out in that video, uh, which is that whole house fans are very useful in certain applications, but that does not stop the companies that sell whole house fans from trying to sell them to everyone in the entire country. They're telling you how many HERS rating points you're gonna get as a result of putting in a whole house fan. And that just also points out that the ResNet HERS rating does not take account of people's health or of controlling particulate or any of the other humidity issues in air. It's all about energy at that point. And that's just not the conversation that we're having on this channel. I'm putting this guy on the spot, but this is important for you to know. One of the most important things that's happening in high performance uh, or in just performance tuning, just making homes healthy at all, is this guy right here. And other people like him that I haven't met yet, but Scott is a spec home builder for normal people in the middle of Texas, where people cannot afford to pay a million dollars for a house. I mean, we do, we do the uh, nice, some nicer custom homes and everything as well, but what I was just saying a minute ago is that really my mission is I wanna bring these high performance things to normal people with normal budgets um, to the spec home world, really. Do your subs understand any of what you're doing or you just not tell them? I try, I try to tell them. Um, I'm always trying to educate um, because I believe that, you know, when you, when you understand the why behind what you're doing, you're enabled to do it better. Um, but I mean, this is again, this is this kind of the spec home world that I live in, and uh, most of these subcontractors are not interested in understanding the why. Well, they have to work to all, all the other guys. They just want too. to do it the way they've always done it. They don't want to make changes. It's, it's a challenge. Yeah. This is Eric <laughs> Bernal. You'll remember him from our house. He was in the water filtration master. So we got a couple new things on water, right? We do. We do. Incredible. Thing. So we have a nanofiber technology filter that is layered with different uh, uh, qualities of carbon. So now when the water comes through our filter, it's a four and a half by 21 inch filter, full flow, 11 gallons a minute, purifies down to the 0 0.01 micron, full flow, never been done before outside of RO. Nice. And my RO system is how many gallons a minute? Is that it capable of? Uh, maybe a gallon. One gallon a minute, maybe, <laughs> which is why you have that three gallon tank. Right. sitting there so that it, like you won't run out of it but yeah 11 gallons a minute is crazy i don't ever run 11 gallons a minute in my house, so that, that's good that's good capacity well to be able to shower in that cook with that without the worry of a point of use so now you have points of entry that acts like a point of use for the whole house the whole yeah. house laundry and it's affordable less than a thousand oh, really? bucks installed less than a thousand bucks. all right cool well we'll have more coming about that soon so i gave my same presentation here at april air again i'm going to Oh, uh, upload that as a separate video that I'm linking on screen right now. But yesterday, carbon dioxide was up around 2,000. Way too high um, for people to be making decisions that are maybe gonna be ill-advised. So what's interesting here is that this is a hobo. This is the MX-1102. This is the Air Things uh, Wave Plus. When you uh, wave your hand in front of it, 1149, 1158. That tells you that this is a good number. 
double checking and having redundant readings is very important. Also, by the way, one thing that's interesting, this radon, 15. That's really, really high. But again, with the redundant readings, test instruments can go bad. I would, I would be very um, cautious about telling you that test instruments are often wrong. I don't think that's true. I've actually disbelieved my test instruments plenty in the past and it turns out that they're right and I'm wrong. But sometimes if you take a radon monitor on a plane, which goes up in the atmosphere where the radiation levels are different, it'll freak this number out. And so this sensor is not actually reading what's real. We don't know what is real. It could be higher than this, I guess. Um, but likely it's not that high just based on the fact that the ventilation in here is is substantial. There's probably 20,000 people at the show and this, this number is not so bad. Again, at the end of the day yesterday, I think something went wrong with their HVAC system, which is why it was 2,000. But uh, there's more to talk about here. I've got Matt Hoots from Sawhorse. So Matt is the builder on a renovation project where they're gutting this historic home. I'm linking the video on screen right now. But Matt, what have you been seeing at the show that you think is really exciting for the kind of work that you're trying to do? Well, I mean, for years we've had amazing products out there that are on the market, like controlling, uh, ventilation, HVAC. And one thing that I've noticed this year, and I feel like we're like just, just now starting to almost hit the apex, is looking at monitoring and being able to control these systems. So you can have a monitoring system, you can have something that um, exhaust out, but now that they're actually talking to each other. Um, we've had controls in the past for like, you can look at um, temperature, humidity, but now we're looking at more than that. We're looking at lighting, we're looking at energy. So these systems are finally getting smarter and getting affordable. It used to be it's like, you have to have a whole server room dedicated just to like whatever you're going to use to control your house. Now you're using your iPhone. It's, uh, right. it's easily as accessible and, it, and, it, and it's perfect for all these things. Yeah, we've got the computers in our pocket. It might as well just use them for exactly. more than just scrolling through Instagram. So that was my time at the Builder Show 2022. I hope that this has been enjoyable for you. If you have other things that you wanted to point out about the show, if you were there or if you have questions, feel free to comment below, like, subscribe, tune in next time.